right. It is a Kirby on Sports podcast exclusive, exclusively on the Kirby on Sports podcast YouTube page. First, our sponsors, Regroup Building Services, PM Plus Reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, and our brand new sponsors, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation. We are pleased to have on the show. It's an honor and a pleasure to bring on the Glass Joe JP, the one, the only John Paul Flame, the host of the greatest morning show on 106.7 The Fan, the Sports Junkies. Wow. John Paul, thanks for the time, sir. It's an honor and a pleasure once again. How is everything? Everything's good, Josh, man. Finally glad that we can hook up and make this thing happen. I honestly feel like I'm on the junkies right now for some reason, but I'm interviewing the host of the junkies. So I mean, well, then your intelligence level just drops. <laughs> junkies. Uh, I guess so. But um, first and foremost, I mean, a, a, a lot has been um, going on, but I, uh, I want to sort of start with a pretty loaded question here. Um, I know some about how the junkies started, but I would like to get a brief summary on how the sports junkie started. Well, long before I had gray hair and tried to grasp at a terrible beard, <laughs> we were in our 20s, kind of doing our own thing. But to take it back even further, three of us, EB, Cakes, and myself, grew up within a block of each other. And we've been friends since kindergarten. Jason then met Eric at DeMatha, and we became friends since high school. But to forward over to the 20s, we're kind of all doing our own thing. And kind of on a whim, we started doing a cable access TV show in Bowie where we grew up. And about a year later, an article was written about us in the Washington Times, compared us to Wayne's World, cable access show. Nobody was really watching us. But the radio station, which happens to be 106.7, back then it was Hot Talk. WJFK was Stern in the morning, Don and Mike in the afternoons, the Grease Man at night. They had just bought the Redskins and were looking to do a sports weekend. They saw the article. They gave us a shot on the weekends and the rest is history. Wow. That's incredible. And it all started in college with that cable access TV. I saw sort of something on YouTube about how the junkies got started. And I saw you all way back in the day. And I didn't realize how long the junkies have been going on. And it started with you all wearing suits on TV. And I was like, that's right. It actually started after college. Just to let you know, EB and I graduated in 92. Huh? And Jason, they had cakes and lurch, a little bit of a longer circuitous route to graduation. Okay. <laughs> we all graduated high school together in 88. College, 92 for EB and I. And then in the summer of 1995, I actually went to law school. So after my first year of law school at Temple, in Philadelphia, I came home for the summer. EB, his girlfriend at the time, now his wife, lived in the neighborhood that we grew up in, so he was back home a lot, and he popped over to my house, so this is 1995, and he was like, hey, do you want to start a cable access show? And I was like, boom, let's make it happen. <laughs> uh, I called Bowie City Hall, that's all it took, and they said, okay, uh, you just have to take a class. It was one class, not for months, one actual class for like two hours, which was basically how not to destroy their equipment. And we had a time slot and we had a show. <laughs> Jumped the board because, so it was going to be me, EB and Cakes. The day that we were going to do our first show, Cakes had to work a double at Toys R Us and said, I can't make it. <laughs> who can we call? Eric and I looked at each other. We don't want to do a two-man show. We said, who can we call who's living here, who knows a little something about sports? And it was Jason, a.k.a. Lurch. And Lurch was by far the best on that cable access show. He had a little background as a DJ at Salisbury. He had done some TV stuff. He just looked good on camera. EB and I looked completely clueless. But the thing is, we realized that very first show, as bad as it was, that it was fun. And we kept wanting to do it. And we kept wanting to make it better because it was fun. And we were having fun together. and. Here we are more than 25 years later, we're still having fun together, which is the main, main kind of crux of the show. Yeah. I mean, well, when I listen to the junkies, it's basically 
you got to get your fill on sports and you do that pretty darn well with all the guests you get on. You get Peter Laviolette for crying out loud, like these coaches who come on the show and it's mixed in with entertainment. And that's why I think um, the sports junkies is so unique in a way because you mix in uh, your buddy, John Feinstein. I, I saw that episode where you all were trolling him. I believe, I forget <laughs> who it was, Valdez or something trolling him. And then, um, I mean, you get um, the movie section with Kevin McCarthy. It's not just sports. It's a mix of everything. And I feel like that is the perfect morning drive to start your commute wherever you might be stuck in traffic on 495 heading down the 95 or whatever it may be i just feel like it's perfect morning radio thanks i mean it's a great compliment really the show's about four friends so if you go out with your buddies what are you going to talk about probably a lot about sports but you also might talk about a waitress you might talk about something ridiculous in your life talk about something in the news and that's really what the show is all about now because we've been doing it for so long and we've been successful we're able to get those guests like a peter laviolette the head coach of the capitals we've built relationships over the years but at its core the show is about four buddies four buddies hanging out and that's really what it's always been yeah, does it does it affect you all at all? Four buddies hanging out that you have to get up so early in the morning for an early slot show. Look at my eyes, Josh. <laughs> it clearly affects me. All right. When we started the show, I'm not saying I was some Ben Affleck handsome dude, but I didn't have these bags. <laughs> now, natural age, like when we started out, we were kind of like these crap boys. Ironically, none of us were in a fraternity, but I think we had kind of that sound because we were all in our 20s. Some of us single, we're hanging out. We started as a weekend show, Saturday nights, five to eight. We're having a blast. And now we all have kids. We all have kids who are like in college. It's crazy. That's how long we've been doing the show. How old are you, Josh? I'm 22. 22. So we started the show when I was 24. The rest of the guys were like 25, 1995, right? So I'm October, October. I'm the youngest junk. But we were all 24, 25 when we started that cable access show. So we're young, cool. We don't have the gray hair. So uh, time, you know, time has passed. We've gotten older. It's crazy. We now cover some of the sons of guys we were covering 25 years ago in the leagues. You know, it is crazy. Hardaway back then. Now we're covering Tim Hardaway Jr. That's the kind of way it is. But kind of the cool thing is, we always are picking up new audience. But there are so many people that listen to us back then that have stuck with us for 25 years and then there's the interesting part too that sometimes there are people that listen to us 25 years ago 20 years ago and now their kids come up to us and they're like your age and they're like yeah i used to listen to you guys in my car with my dad i'm like how old are you oh 25 <laughs> like holy crap oh my gosh so uh, sticking with um the junkies and stuff um do, can you pinpoint after all these years a favorite memory you have um, while recording the junkies? Wow, that's really hard. Um, I know it's loaded, but we've had a lot of great experiences and had a lot of great people on the show. But for me, I grew up in Bowie, Maryland. I had three posters in my bedroom I had Eddie Murray, I had Jim Palmer, and I had Cal Ripken Jr., three of the Orioles. They were, they were my favorite team growing up. Wow when we got to meet Cal and have him in studio and build a relationship, that's always going to be at the top of my list. Like, it's incredible to me that Cal, like, he kind of likes us. I mean, I haven't had the pleasure of being over at his house, but Jason actually played hoops with Cal twice at his old place. Um, he came out to our golf tournament. Oh my. Great to us over the years. So to me, that's kind of always top of the list. Wow, that that's incredible. Um, may I ask where this falls on the list where EB's mother did not choose the five star technician, Prop <laughs> Metcalf? Um, you know what? She's been a great joy on the show. <laughs> really enjoy hearing EB's mom. Our other mothers, I'll tell you, my mom, um, who just passed away, she would never want to come on the air. And I think the same thing for both Jason's mom and Case's mom. But Mrs. Bickle kind of enjoys it. She's a hoot. Um, she tries to set us straight. 
I mean, she's been trying to set us straight for 25 years. She doesn't like some of the topics and some of the ways that we talk about things. Um, but she does love the show. She's always been a supporter of the show. And actually, her husband, Reverend Carl Bickle, who grew up, again, I grew up across the street from EB. So our families have been intertwined basically my whole life. And Mr. Bickle actually used to record the junkies on cassettes when we started out. Wow. About 77 shows deep, I would listen to each show as I was driving to and from Philadelphia. And then eventually I was like, okay, we've been doing it a long enough time. This is a little cumbersome. But that's what we used to do back in the day. We would do the show, listen to it again to kind of figure out what's working. And uh, we're long beyond that now. We'll just, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. So do, do you ever go back and listen to your old shows anymore? No, God, no. no. Yeah. Too, uh, too many shows to keep track of at too this point. Too many shows. I mean, I could tell you for five years, I kept track of every show. Wow. And then I realized, I think I was doing it because I didn't know how long we were going to last to be able to go. Oh yeah. Remember when we did that radio show? Remember like when we had fill in the blank guest, but once you get to like a thousand shows, you realize hopefully it just keeps going and uh we've been going at it for 25 years and who knows how much longer we'll go but um hopefully hopefully i got a four-year-old hopefully i'd say until she gets to college that that's awesome i i mean i gotta I, pay some bills josh <laughs> <laughs> yeah same here yeah uh, what can we say we're just trying to survive out yourself hey but you got a bunch of sponsors on your podcast that's big time man oh uh, yeah you know let me just say this i came on your show because you're persistent for the audience out there, I don't know who's going to check out the show, but I always say this to people that are interested because sometimes people say, you know, I'd love to do what you guys do. You just, like, there are many avenues to do it now. There are podcasts, there are YouTube channels. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and you were persistent and you got me on. You know, it's been a tough time here the last couple of months for me, but things have slowed down and boom, we made it happen. So props to you, Josh. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate those kind words. I've been doing this podcast for three years in the first podcast I recorded, it was in a friend's basement because I had no clue how to do a podcast. I just uploaded it to YouTube because that was the easiest way to do it. And I talked about the Capitals and the Stanley Cup, winning the Stanley Cup and talking about that. Those were my first two episodes in almost 119 deep three years later. I mean, it, I mean, the support means so much. So I appreciate those kind words. Nice. Well, look, always, this is what I'll also say. Look, I'm 50 years old. I've lived some life. What I'd say is when you're 22, and I don't know where you're living right now, if you're living with your parents, whatever, you have a little more freedom. Once you start having kids and the bills start piling up, you may not have the freedom to kind of pursue these things. And we were fortunate that we were at a point in our life when we started that cable access show. Yes, I was pursuing a legal career. I was in law school. Eric was in grad school. But we weren't married. We didn't have a bunch of kids. Cakes had just gotten married. So we had the ability to go for it. And you've got the ability to go for it. So it's great that you're kind of out there trying it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So let, let's get into some sports talk now. I, I, I want to I talk some sports. I want to get your thoughts. I saw you on Twitter talking about the 76ers collapse the other night against the Hawks. That was just plain bad. Yeah, I don't know if it falls on the coaching or the players, and maybe it's just the limitations of that team. When one of your best players can't shoot and can't shoot free throws, you're kind of limited. Yeah. And if you take him off the court because you don't want the whole hack of Ben Simmons deal and you don't want him to miss free throws, well, now you've taken one of your best defenders off the court. And now that best defender can't guard Trey Young, who's just lighting up the league right now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That series is tight right now. It's been a pretty good series so far. The 76ers obviously not eliminating the Washington Wizards out of playoff contention. The Wizards were an 0.6% chance of even making it to the playoffs. And they can't come to terms with Scott Brooks, so they have to move on from him. A name that circled... I don't know if it was so much they couldn't come to terms. I think they didn't want... I think they felt like it ran its course and now there's going to have uh, a change of direction. They're going to look for a new coach. We'll see how it develops. 
the thing about the Wizards coaching search is think about it if you're a top candidate. Would you choose Washington as your destination when you could go to Dallas and coach Luca? When you no. could go to Portland and have Dame? You could go to all these places, New Orleans with Zion. Like the Wizards do have two great stars. Russell Westbrook is amazing. I love him. In fact, I'm in my son's room. You see him in the background there. I love his intensity. He's only got two years left in his contract. He's in his 30s. You know, Bradley Beal's got one more year and he can opt out. So I don't know how attractive the job is compared to a Celtics job or the Mavericks job or the Blazers job. So we'll see what happens, how it shakes out. So a head coaching candidate that's been circulating around, Wes Unsell Jr., do, do you know anything about him? Because I had no clue Wes's son was even a coach in the league. I've heard he's kind of a defensive wizard, but EB mentioned this on the show today. If you simply look at the history of coaches in Washington since they won a championship in 1979, there's only one with the winning record. So as much as people can say Scott Brooks wasn't the right guy, to me it's more about the personnel. And Tommy Shepard, we like him. We had him on the show this week. He's the GM of the Wizards, took over for Ernie Grunfeld. He's going to have to tweak the lineup. We saw in that Sixers series that they absolutely need a wing, a small forward, and they need more shooting. So hopefully they can do that in the offseason. To me, that's far more important than the head coach because, you know, put in the best head coach, whoever you think the best head coach is in the NBA, put him in Scott Brooks' seat for that Sixers series. Do you think there's a different outcome? I don't. Yeah, um, uh, of course. So um, the, Tommy Shepard obviously replacing Ernie Grunfeld. I feel like he's doing a pretty good job from what I've seen. I mean, obviously there's still some work to do with the Washington Wizards, but having Tommy Shepard in that front office pick a new head coach, I think that's the right direction to go in, in my opinion. Yeah, I like what he's done so far. That trade that brought in Daniel Gafford. Look, i would never heard of Daniel Gafford. Turns out he's a pretty good player. And so they've made some nice moves. Um, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, it's disappointing uh, that they lost four games to one in the playoffs. But look, the Sixers were the one seed. The Wizards snuck into the playoffs. It was a great second half of the season. So we'll see how it develops. They're going to have to make some tweaks in the offseason. Hopefully maybe get another free agent or two that can kind of change the complexion of the team and have a good draft choice. So what I'll say about this, Josh, Take a look at Tommy Shepard's resume. You're on the way up, right? You've got big dreams of being this radio star or TV star or whatever the heck you want to be. Tommy Shepard, I believe, who's now the GM of the Washington Wizards, I believe he started in sports management, maybe even interning, and just worked his way up in the NBA. Wow. He's not a NBA player, not a former NBA coach. He just grinded, and now he's running a team. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, uh, inspiring stories all over sports, no doubt about it. So, uh, let me get your thoughts on the Bucks and Nets really quick before we move on. Um, that's been a back and forth series. The Bucks have been tearing it up. Then Kevin Durant staying in for an entire game and beating the Bucks. I mean, this series is going back and forth. A lot of interesting playoff basketball so far. Yeah, I mean, it was just an awesome game to watch the other night. KD has kind of reasserted himself as the top player in the NBA, but doesn't have much help right now. Ironically, if you went back to before the series, you had Kyrie Irving, you had a healthy James Harden. You would say they're the more talented team. Right now, it looks like Harden is limited. Kyrie is out. So it's a tough call. Game seven's at home. We'll see what happens. I would lean towards that way. I don't know where you're going to air this podcast. Um, don't hold me against it. Look, I pick losers all the time, but I kind of like Brooklyn to advance. Absolutely. So talking from NBA to NFL, um, I want to get your thoughts here, JP, um, the Washington football team. Um, what were your thoughts when they picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick? Do you think he was too old? Uh, you got him on the pod, uh, the junkies and that interview was great, but do you think, uh, did you like the move? Did you think he was too old? Or do you think he's going to fit in well to teach the younger quarterbacks in Washington? Uh, number one, I don't think he's too old. I mean, we've seen what Tom Brady has done and 
look, Aaron Rodgers is about the same age as Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I don't, pe- I don't hear people saying Aaron Rodgers is too old, okay? To me, it's not an age issue. Mm-hmm. I did the best they could given where they were with the cap and given what was available. They weren't going to be able to bring in some superstar. I think they took a swing at Matthew Stafford. He ends up in L.A. Ryan Fitzpatrick was kind of the best of the bunch. Junkies are kind of the split. Cakes is super high. Believes this guy's going to be slinging it for 16 games. I'm less high on it. I think there's a possibility that happens. But he's also Ryan Fitzpatrick, okay? Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to have games where he throws a couple of interceptions. And they've got a guy in Taylor Heineke that's intriguing. And he's going to be there behind them. And everything we hear about him is he knows the system. Coaches like him. Turner, the offensive coordinator, likes him. Uh, seems like the head coach, Ron Rivera, likes him. So he's lurking. If you get a couple bad games from Fitzpatrick, I could see them going to Heineke in the middle of the season. You know, we hear that there's going to be an open competition. That's probably not the case. I think that Fitzpatrick's making 10 times the amount of money that Taylor Heineke is. So is it really going to be an open competition? Probably not. But if the team struggles and Fitzpatrick struggles, They'll probably make a switch. So I'm kind of waffling. I don't know how great he's going to be this year. I could definitely see a scenario. Look, we went through the schedule. We do it all the time on the junkies. It's a fun thing. You go through the schedule, right? There's four of us on the show, four different opinions. I'm less high on how the Washington football team is going to do this year than the rest of the guys. I mean, Cakes had them winning 12 games. I, he's lost his mind. If you they play some damn good quarterbacks this season. And they didn't really face that last year. And we saw what a good quarterback, Tom Brady, could do against the defense. The defense is good. But is it maybe overhyped? kind of think so because they got carved up in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But do you think this Washington football schedule, have you ever seen anything like this the last five games of the season, division opponents? I mean, that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun for the fans. And my guess is, the division is going to be up for grabs. Is Washington the favorite? A lot of people want to make Washington the favorite. Maybe they are the favorite. Uh, they won the division last year. But look, you faced a Dallas team with that Dak Prescott. I mean, at one point, they faced Ben DiNucci. Had you heard of Ben DiNucci before that game? I really yes, okay. I have. You had. Well, good for you, Josh, because I have. I'll be honest. Raise your hand if you haven't heard of Ben DiNucci. <laughs> Okay. Well, I live an hour from Harrisonburg. That's why. To face backup quarterbacks, okay? Many games they face backup quarterbacks. This year, they're going to be facing the likes of Brady and some of the best quarterbacks in the game. So it's going to be challenging. Absolutely. So um, Washington football uh, talk. Once again, we're joined by John Paul Flame, the host of the Sports Junkies on 106.7 The Fan. Find him on Twitter at GlassJoeJP. He has exciting content Monday through Friday on the Sports Junkies 106.7 The Fan. Before we wrap things up, I um, was reading up uh, just getting sort of a biography on the Sports Junkies and reading certain key moments. Um, I want to get your thoughts on what you and the rest of the junkies reaction was when Joe Beninati announced after the caps won the Stanley cup, that the sports junkies would be a part of that Stanley cup parade and how much it meant to the sports junkies after everything you all have been through from every time Pittsburgh beat Washington in the Stanley cup uh, playoffs to avoid them winning a cup, to finally them getting over the hump, winning Lord Stanley's Cup? Well, we were incredibly honored. Undeserving. We're no different than any other fans, except we host a radio show and our station carries the games. It was an absolute thrill. I played sports my whole life. EB and I used to play one-on-one hoops. We used to play one-on-one soccer, one-on-one baseball. We grew up across the street from each other. Cakes down the street. We played sports all our lives. Never could we have imagined we'd be part of a championship parade, like to be in the parade. So it was incredible. You're a little bit torn because we didn't do anything. I can barely skate. Most of the guys can barely skate. Cakes is probably the best, and believe me, he's not good on the ice. <laughs> I've seen him on the ice. We played in a, in a Capitals media day, and it was ugly. Um, 
but yeah, it was an absolute thrill. So that's how I'd say. And, and undeserving again, we have championship rings. It's crazy. I've got championship rings from the Capitals and the Nationals. If I'm ever in a pickle, I'm going to hawk them. I'm not going to lie. But right now, I have two championship rings that I have that I can display. That's awesome. Was it a surprise when Lord Stanley made an appearance at WJFK during one of your show? A little bit of a surprise, but, you know, we've been doing the thing long enough, and I know that they kind of do a tour every year with uh, the Stanley Cup. So that was kind of cool. And you got to interview the um, uh, keeper of the cup, too. That show was pretty fun. I, I've i watched it multiple times, and that – was it the Nats or the – I believe – it was either both of them or one or the other. I might be getting them confused, but I remember after one of the teams won the championship the morning after you all popped champagne or something and had like a celebration on air the whole time. Oh, I think it was, I mean, I'm going to guess that it was the Capitals because that was the first one. Look, I know I, I, I never believed that there was a DC curse, but a lot of people did. A lot of people were like, this town is cursed. We're never going to have a championship. And you talked about the history, the disappointments, the game seven losses, the series with the Pens. Like, they finally got over the hump. So it was a huge celebration. Like, that's one of those things. Yes, we host a sports radio show. We're a morning show. We took over for Howard Stern, all of these things. But at the end of the day, like I said, we're four friends who are sports fans. And it was just fun. Like, it was amazing. Like, that night when they actually won it, it was like Cakes ran out to Dick's to get gear. We got gear. <laughs> We're losers like everybody else. We just wanted to get gear and like celebrate. Of course, cakes ran to dicks. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to out myself. I didn't, but I actually sent my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. The thing for me, I did the exact same thing, but I was too lazy to go out. So I just ordered it online and it took about four days. But I mean, I mean, it was probably one of the best championship runs for me, because it was the first in DC history, not only your radio show, but probably all the radio shows, sports radio shows in DC were going over the edge because the Capitals won the uh, Stanley Cup. And then the year after the Nats winning the World Series, that must have been great as well. No, it was awesome. And, you know, the kind of really special thing with the Capitals was it really built. If you just go back, to thinking about the scenes outside of Capital One. Like all of a sudden you started having viewing parties and more people started showing up and more people started showing up. And then all of a sudden, I mean, there were people that probably hadn't watched a hockey game their whole lives, but they just wanted to be part of the scene. You know I mean, the whole city, the whole DMV kind of gets behind it and it was really special to see. And then the celebrations afterwards, the players kind of going nuts at a Nats game, the Fountain, OB. I mean, the whole thing was just a great ride. It was, it was crazy, too, because like all those Caps players were just, even when the Caps went to the Nats Park afterwards, they were just trashed all day swimming in fountains, and people were just enjoying them because they won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, going back to, again, how we felt about it, we're in a parade. It's about Ovi. It's about Backy. It's about the goalie. It's about the players, right? The people were cheering for us. It was insane because everybody was just in a euphoric mood. That's awesome. So that's about all the time we have. I could probably go on with you for hours and hours on end, just dissecting every great thing I love about the sports junkies, but we don't have enough time for that. But glass. Look, Joe I appreciate it. And like I said, I respect your hustle. 22 year old kid, and you've done over 100 shows. I, I do as much as you can, meet as many people, make as many connections, and then you never know. We, what I'd say about the junkies to go back to your first question, we got lucky in a way, but we also made our luck. We found something we were passionate about. And once we started doing that cable access show, we made it as good as we could make it, and then we marketed it. And we were fortunate that Dick Heller answered my phone call and he listened to my pitch. And then I sent him a tape and he liked it. And he wrote an article about us. And that article changed our life. That article changed the trajectory of the four of our lives. 
Um, nowadays, you're in a position where you can make your own content. You can make content on YouTube. You can do podcasts. You can do all of these things and you can build your following and hopefully that following can lead to something else. I, once again, I, I, I appreciate those kind words. It really means a lot coming from you, um, listening to your radio show pretty much every morning before work. I can't catch the whole thing because I work pretty early, but still I catch a portion of it and it just gets me going for the day because the sports junkies, they're just amazing to listen to. I appreciate it. Once again, you can find John Paul, Paul Flame on Twitter at Glass Joe JP. Glass Joe JP. That's an interesting handle. How did you come up with that? You're young. <laughs> there was a game called uh, Mike Tyson's uh, Punch Out. Okay. Uh huh. Old video game. The first character that you face is Glass Joe. It's an easy win. You can knock him out. He's got a glass chin. So I don't know if you're aware of this. Many years ago, through the radio show, I fought a boxing match at the Patriot Center. Great show business. It was a great idea. I had a crazy idea. I was able to execute the idea. I had my ring entrance. It was great. Thousands of junkies listeners were there to support me. And under the bright lights, I'll admit it, I choked. And got stopped with one second left in the first round. Not my proudest moment, but I actually did it. It was a crazy idea. I did it. But wow. I started calling myself Glass Joe JP because much like Glass Joe, I got destroyed in the ring. Man. Well, that that's the name behind Glass Joe JP. Once again, for our sponsors, Regroup Building Services, PM Plus Reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, and our brand new sponsor, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation. This has been another Kirby on Sports Podcast exclusive interview. JP, an honor and a pleasure, sir. We always appreciate the time. Thank you, Josh. Until the next time you see us, always remember to create greatness, and we will catch you next time. Peace out.